What's good everybody, it's your boy Slant, aka Mr. Different, back with another video. In this video, it's going to be another quick tip video. I'm really enjoying these quick tip videos. I'm trying to give you as many as I can, as fast as I can. It's because you guys like that, make it short, sweet, to the point, all it is. But today, I'm going to give you five tips that you can do before you start recording or while you're recording that can help you out and just kind of approve your workflow, kind of help you out. And I will be going more in depth in these features, but today's just going to be five quick tips that should help you out when recording inside of FS Studio, because why not? So let's jump right to the FS Studio. So here we are inside of FS Studio and let me go ahead and pull up my notes so I can pull up my five you know pretty much my five quick little tips to help you out before you start recording and while you're recording FS Studio. Now the first one is the audio folder track. Basically this will tell FS Studio where to send the audio tracks that you record in FS Studio because as default when you record something in FS Studio it would just put it on your desktop in some random FS Studio documents folder on your desktop and that could you know slow down your computer because you get if you're running out of hard drive space not it it can slow you down so you can actually choose where those files go on just by going to options and then if you go to file settings i think it's project settings and right here it says data folder so basically you can actually select where you want all those files to go so anytime you record something it will go to fs studio and a quick tip if you go ahead and save your project before you start recording all you gotta do is hit the auto button and whatever that FLP is it will put that folder or put those effects right there inside there So that's pretty dope right there Just a quick way to kind of keep everything organized and to also free up some space when recording because a couple tricks down the road I'm gonna teach you something that's gonna help you out really good as well So on to the next tip so tip number two, which is the metronome volume how you can set your metronome volume now when I record I love to turn my beat down when you turn your beat down That means you have to crank your volume and if you're somebody like me who likes a countdown or if you might be recording drums or guitar something that and you want to play along to a metronome that metronome can be super super loud and how do you control that volume pretty simple all you gotta do is go to options go to audio and right here in the preview mixer track you get to set where the metronome is set so i'm just gonna set it to like eight but you can set it to wherever you want to depending on you you can go up in here now it's set to eight now it goes to track eight i can dock it so let's go to dock it and we'll dock it to the left and then i can change it to rename it and change it met you know, just for metronome. Now, when I turn on my metronome and play, I can now easily control the volume of my metronome. Like I said, really good for people who play with guitars or drums or if you want your countdown not to be so loud because you turned your volume up because you turned your beat down, this will help you out. Quick tip, very easy. Took me a while to figure it out, but I did. Hopefully it helped you guys out. Okay, so here we are with tip number three, and that is setting up punch in and punch out markers. Now, I will be going into full details on how to do this in a later video, but I just want to show you how you can set them up so you can do some punch in, punch outs. Because I'm doing a audio video where I'm going to show you how to do some editing and stuff like that. And punch in and punch out can be a very, very, very big help to recording some audio. So, how you set it up? Pretty simple. All you got to do is go up into your like your pattern arranger window. Go to time and marker and you can hit add one or you can put alt t so you can do that so just do that we'll call it punch in and there's a punch in marker put it right there and then we can do another one which would be we'll just do the shortcut alt t and then we'll put punch out now we have two different markers set up to do you know the exact thing they're supposed to so all you gotta do to change what they actually do in their functions just right click on them and go right here put in punch in recording and right here, right click and then put in punch out recording. Now you have a punch in, punch out. So now I'm gonna go ahead and do the arranger tool the way I usually do it. So I go to track mode, go to assign track audio number one. And then I say, go in here and select my microphone. I told this in a previous video, but you ain't gotta worry about it because if you've seen that previous video, you know. And I just delete this so we get rid of that. Yeah, goodbye. And now I'm going to record and it should punch in and then punch out and it should copy again and do it again. So let's see how it works. So here I am recording inside of FS Studio doing a little punch in, punch out. If I'm correct, it should stop right there and then reverse and see it's not, nothing's happening right now, but when I come back in for the next verse. So here I am recording inside. As you can see, it's gonna punch in right there. But like I said, if you didn't previously record something, let me take this off because I'm gonna echo. If you didn't previously record something right here, then it's just gonna, you know, punch in and come in whenever. So, but it's good to set this up. So, let's say if you want to punch in, punch out, let's say you're doing some stop and go type of recording, that's gonna be really helpful. Like I said, I'll make a full video going more in depth about that. But that is how you set it up. Pretty simple, pretty easy. So, it might be something you guys might be interested in because it was something that I'm interested in. So, hey, I don't know. It is what it is. So, tip number four is post and pre recording. What is the difference between that and how do you actually activate them? So, I'm gonna go ahead and show you. Let me just delete these markers real quick and get it all set up. So, we already got my track set up right here. 
and I got it right here. So pre and post recording is basically how it's going to record your effects. So uh, pre means it's going to record everything before the effects. So that means if you want to say you want to send your audio out to get recorded or like recorded, but get mixed down by a professional mixer or somebody else, then you want to record pre. That way it, you can record with plugins, but it won't record the plugins itself. It just record the dry signal. Now post is if you want to, you know, maybe save some CPU uses or you know you want to bake in the sound, say like a compressor or something like that, then you can record post and how you change that is this button right here beside where you select your microphone so i'm just going to go ahead and pick my mic so switch back over to my microphone so you guys can hear me hope it is recording i'm hope yeah make sure it's recording and then i'm just going to throw in a, a compressor let's see what's a good compressor throw my fab filter pro c really good compressor put it on my 11 to 76 style compressor setting now you should be able to hear me and it got a little bit of compression going on so there it is now if I have it set to pre, it's gonna record with a dry signal. But if I select this button right here, hit post, it's gonna record with the actual compression. So for example, and just to make it a little bit more apparent, let's throw in a little bit of reverb also. So I'm just gonna throw in my, where is the little verb? I like the little, my little play 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 play. the mix. So yeah, just get a little reverb. So let's just record a pre real quick. So here we go. So now I'm recording right now and it should record without the effects because I got it set to pre. All right, let's play it back. So now I'm recording right now and it should record. And if I turn the effects off. So now I'm recording right now and it should record without the effects because I got it set to pre. Now let's go set it to post and do the same recording. Now we are going to be recorded and it should pick up with the reverb, even if I turn off the effects. So same thing. I turn off the effects, but it still should have the effects baked into it because I had it recorded post. Now we are going to be recorded and it should pick up with the reverb, even if I turn off the effects. So yeah, there you go. Recording pre and post could be a really good help for you guys. Like I say, if you want to record stuff and bake it in there, you can. Maybe you want to say some CPU uses, that kind of thing. Then record post. But if you're going to be sending out mixing or mixing it later or maybe track it out the stems for like Pro Tools, something like that, then just record pre and keep the dry signal. But just a little quick tip because it could help you out in a pinch. And last but not least, tip number five, and that is purging unused audio. This is a game changer tip for me because it helped me out. Like I say, I'm one of the people who like to record a lot of stuff, like to punch in, punch out, even my artists and all that. And sometimes when you're recording FS Studio, it will capture everything. Even if you, you know, delete it from here, it still keeps it over here in the files right here. So you can just click this and go to audio. See, it still keeps all this stuff right here. So, you know, that's the last thing I recorded, but these are all the previous stuff recorded. It still keeps everything. And that can really, you know, like just fill up your hard drive space real quick and slow your computer down. But you can actually uh, like delete everything that's not being used in this pattern arrange window with one simple button. If you go up to tools and you go to macros, there's a little thing called purge unused audio clips. When you click this, it's gonna delete everything that is not inside the window. So before you do this, make sure that everything you're gonna keep is inside your pattern arrange window or it will delete it. Keep that in mind. So let's say all them old tapes I'm not using, if I hit purge unused audio clips, they're gone. Boom, it just delete them all of my computer. They're gone, I ain't gonna worry about it. And it only has the one that's up in here. Like I said, and if I delete this one, like I said, and do the same thing, it's gonna do the exact same thing. Boom, it's gonna delete it. So make sure that when you use that, that you have what you wanna keep inside of the pattern window and then do it. But like I said, it is a really good tip because it can save up hard drive space and just make your life a lot easier. That way you don't have to go through and find everything. It's also when you track stuff out, you have everything right there. So there you go. Hope this helped you guys out. Like I said, these are just some quick little tips that you can use before recording, after recording, during recording that should help you out when you're recording audio inside of FS Studio. Let's say FS Studio is not the best for audio recording, but with some of these little tips, it can make our lives a little bit easier and you know, make it pretty competitive. And you know, if it's something you want to use, it's something you want to use. So with that being said, y'all know who it is, your boy Slim, AKA Mr. Different, not your favorite nappy headed producer. Yes, I am your favorite nappy headed producer, not motivated by the money, but the like comments rather than views. And with that being Say hope you guys enjoy like always. If you can leave a thumb up on the video, leave a comment down below. If you got any tips you want to share with us, leave them down below. I like to see what they are as well. And that being said, I will catch you guys in the next video. Have a good one, everybody. Yeet.